Right, hello everyone. We've got an interesting one here for you today. So it's a Ford. It's a Mondeo. It's a 2009. And is it a Mark 5, Rory? Mark 5 Mondeo. So it's a 2 litre engine diesel. TDCI. So, what's that? It's a Mark 4. A Mark IV, I would think it's a Mark 4. So, a couple of issues with this car. So, we spoke to the owner and uh, they said, Car, they've had the car about seven years, it went great, no problems at all. But they were out with it a couple of times and it broke down. So what the guy said was they could not select, this is an automatic, so I should have said that. It's an automatic, he said it broke down and they could not select a gear, he said, to get it going. So we're not sure if it actually broke down and the engine shut down or if he broke down just because he couldn't get a gear, I'm not sure. But anyway, he just said he had to do emergency bypass in the gear stick to get the thing to move. So, I done it, we done, when we initially got the car, we done a code scan, and I'll show you that in the edit, and it came up with U codes, which is a no communication code. Now, if I, if I can remember right, there were U codes within the, the body control and the engine control module. So... And what it said in the U code, it could not talk to this module down here, which is the automatic gearbox control module. Now, we've came across this module before in one of my videos, and I'll put a link on a Volvo. So I'm sure they're made by Bosch, these things. So when we get a U code, what we're trying to say is that none of, some of the modules cannot speak. What it's actually doing, it's like all the modules are in a network, it's like a party and they all talk to each other and they're saying, oh look, this module's not talking. So it's a bit like living in East Germany with the Stasi. Everybody dobs each other in. So something like that. Anyway, that's my analogy. So Roddy and myself have came up with a game plan for this. So what we thought we'd do is check the basic electrics first of all. So I'll put, there's a wiring diagram for this I found on the snap on Veris, which looks pretty good. So what we have here... We have a power and a ground, and we have can high, can low, and we also have three wires, and they go to the, well, in the Volvo they called it the GSM, the gear selection module, which is for the automatic gear stick. So there'll be a power and a ground to that, and there's a LIN bus also in that. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires, I think there is, within that module. So I'll take the module off and let you see it. But it done it. Roddy and I were mucking about with the car because uh, the first thing we thought we'd check is the fuse box on this thing. So I'll point you to the fuses here. So it's fuse one. So that does the automatic box. And fuse 42, which is up here, also done the automatic box. So we, we checked the fuse out, they looked a little bit grubby, but not too bad. So what we done, Roddy was sitting in the car, so I decided to pull this fuse, one, and when we'd done that, the the light on the automatic gear selector went out, is that right, Roddy? And we could, we could not get a gear, but the engine was still running. But when we then decided, we put that fuse back in, and the light came back on the, the, light came back on the automatic gear stick. But when we pulled this other one, which is in the wiring diagram, 42, the engine cut out, we lost our electrics, and we lost the gear stick and everything like that. So, we've got a problem. I would suspect it's a problem. I would think it's a feed to that automatic module there. So that's what we're going to go after. But, as ever, we're going to have to try and recreate this problem. And then another thing that we've got here. Now, we left the car overnight and there's a parasitic draw on it, we feel, because the battery was charged up and we came out in the morning and it was flat. So, we'll be standing here about 20 minutes, Roddy. So, we're, we're, the car is locked. Uh, we've put the, what do you call that? The hood, the hood switch down, so the car thinks it's locked. And there's our amperage reading here, let me see. That. So, we're still at half an amp. Now, we know in Fords, and Fords are particularly bad, so is other modern cars, it takes a while for all the modules to go to sleep. Actually, there it's took a, a little dive there. It's looking good. But then it jumps back up again. 
So you really have to give it 45 minutes in order to go down. So I think we'll do this. So we are wondering if there's other problems with this car as well. And just to give you a heads up, because the car's actually locked at the moment. So we're trying to see if the parasitic draw goes down. But when you go to the other fuse box, which I'll show you, yeah, let's see. Well, I think we've got that out. Well, it's hard to see. Still, I'll show you it later on. What we did find on one of the fuses, was it fuse one, Roddy? A fuse, let me see. Someone has tapped off another circuit to it. So that looks mighty suspicious. So we're wondering if that's maybe drawn, but here we go. That's the one with audio. Right, oh, right. so it's number seven. I think you can see that. Fuse number seven, 7.5 amp brown steering wheel module. I wondered if there was actually some in that couldn't have talked to that either. So we'll look at that. The other thing I was going to tell you about this car, the audio system does not work either. So we checked the fuse, which is in here. I'll show you that later. And it's one that we've actually we pulled the radio. We checked for power and ground. There's one power and two grounds. Or I think there's two grounds. And they're all good. So we reckon that the audio system is kaput. Now, I think these are quite notorious for going. So, it'll be quite an interesting one trying to get to the bottom of this. Uh, always check the basics first of all. We need a good barry. Well, there it's took a dive. Let's see if it remains down. See, it's back up again. So that's 70, that's like, that's 700 milliamps. Or five, no, we're doing the 540 milliamps now. That's far too high. We need that to be zero, zero. Let's see if I can... I mean that 0, 0. 0. 0.01 or 0. 0.0, something like that. Aye, 0. 0.01 would be perfect, or, or, or under that. But then again, we're finding our battery voltage, we're down at 11.92. So, what we've actually done, we were trying to locate where the parasitic draw was. We used our, Roddy got one as well, our little amp pound, yeah. and he really likes it. Now, he found this feature on it that I was not aware of, Rather than going through and saying, Roddy, do you demonstrate it? Rather than going through and checking the values, if you want to skip across the fuses and see if there's a draw, it beeps twice. So, you, there, Roddy's going to. So, there we go. So, that's just a no beep. So, go to the. And he's going to this. So, there you go. It goes twice. There again, Roddy. I'll oh, see if I can pick that up. Oh. There you go. And we, he actually tried it with other fuses before he even put the value in. Although that one has defaulted at 5 amps, tried it with other fuses and it beeps twice. You know that you have current flowing and you then just need to go in and set the value. So many fuses. Oh, I'd set it to many fuses, right enough. Five amps. So, 30 quid. so for 30 quid, I reckon, I reckon this is a, a really good buy. So here we go. This is, this is taking a dive back up again. Far too high, that, that will. So, we're going to wait and I'll come back to you. Anyway, cheers. Right, so we've gave it a full 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes, and you can see that our reading is still still high, and it, then it takes, it goes down, but it's, uh, it's cycling, and then the next thing, jump high again. So, I think we've gave it enough time there, so we're going to go inside and investigate this fuse box, and I'll show you what we find. The other thing I've got to say, we've got a U light. There we go. It's out of uh, Aldi's. So it's, what did I say, Roddy, again, the mini? 4,000 lumens. So it's, oh, it's a bright one. So you can see the, the engine bay looks nice. It's illuminating that well. We do lots of things for the folk in this channel. We get the best. <laughs> uh, so is there a part number there? Yeah. In fact, I'll tell you better than that. Here's the box. Oh dear, you can see the flash in it. Right. So it's lightweight, LED, work light, 50 watt, maximum 4,500 lumens, 24.99. So it's IP54. I'll take it away for that, because it flashes. Is it? Why that? I oh, see it's uh, the strobe effect. My cam it's my camera, it's not actually the light, eh? So there's everything there. Uh, at the lower setting, it's 2,250 lumens, at the highest, four. Four and a half, so the only thing it's no battery operated, it has a cable, but for inside the workshop here, this is absolutely ideal. Uh, we ever ran out of the, the battery, and you can see it's got a stand and everything like that. But we've just 
we've just mounted it up with a cable tie. And there you go. Save your fortune. So, aye. Back up to 60. In fact, what we'll do is we'll zero our amps clamp just to make sure that's a true reading. That's my amps clamp zero. Ah, see, it's still high. There you go. Nearly one amp. Right. Let's open the car up. So that's where you... That's four amps for the car. That's when we lock it again. See, uh, if we open it again... Hey Roddy, we'll have a wee look in here then. Uh, so there's the interior fuse box, I think. There is the interior fuse box, and I think you can see that red wire at the top. That's taped into one of the circuits. And that's no original, so we're going to do away with that. And watch her reading after that. There, it's there. So we'll take that out. So I'm feeding two things. I don't know where that's going to. I have no idea. Can't even remember what fuse floor came out of it. I'll wait to check. Right, we'll watch it. Feed after that, Roddy. Oh. I can't even tell you what you're not doing it, do you? <laughs> so we're still trying to hunt down this parasitic draw. Uh, we know we'll have a slight draw on this fuse, but we're trying to do it with everything shut down and trying to get into the car. It's quite difficult. Right enough, we could try and lock the door. So we're still hunting that problem. Uh, although, I was thinking a low battery voltage, uh, because it's low to start with, that can cause all sorts of chaotic issues. So, maybe if we could try and put a good battery in it first of all, then try and shut the car down. That maybe actually resolve that parasitic draw issue, but it's worth a go anyway, so we can do that. So, just to round off today, because I'm running out of time, uh, our main issue is this fault with the automatic gearbox module. In fact, I'll just show you the pins on this thing. So there is, see I can get good light in here. There is the multi plug for it there. So you can see the two fat pins on the, my right hand side here. That will be a power in the ground. And as I said to you, that the smaller pins will be can high, can low, power and ground for that module in the car and a lin wire on that. So I think I'm going to do a check the pins for tightness, that would be my first, my first uh, thing to go and do. Uh, let me see. And I think another way of monitoring this is to watch if the light goes off in the car, so I'll pop that back on at the moment. I'll see. Let's click back in. I get past you, Gus. You can see the light is on, on the automatic, uh, the gear shift module, I think that's a module. So I'm going to pull it off and you can see that just dies and it would generate a code. I've popped, popped the module multi-plug off. That's it out. So we'll, we'll look at the car and you can see the lights just die on the automatic shifter. So that's another way of monitoring it. So I think if the bit gets to the crunch, how we're going to monitor this, 
we'll strip back that, that multi-plug there so we can run about monitoring the power on the ground and we can also use our amps clamp I think we'll start with powers first powering ground first and the, even a test bulb could do that if we wired that in and we could just watch it and see what we get for there I mean I think the, I remember speaking to a guy from Volvo who have exactly the same module and what they were saying were about these automatic gear modules, they're bomb proof yeah, they never, the guy worked in a Volvo dealership, never had one issue with them, so we'll go for powering grounds. What we've done here, we've checked, I've got this wee connector thing here, so I'm just checking for pin fitments. You can see that's nice and tight, and that one at the top there is nice and tight. I need to check the can bus one, but what else we can do, I'm going to put the key on, this just stands there, and we'll use our check test light just to check, see how bright it is. I'll need to power that up though. So my, that's my ignition is on. So we'll just use our old trusty test light to back the uh, to negative. So we'll just see if we've got a feed on one. There you go, that's a good feed. So, oh dear. So you see that's bright enough. 300 and then we'll just put our test lead to battery positive which is up here we'll just check our test lead and that and we'll just go to the other side there you go that's a good negative test light nice and bright we'll just go back to that negative again Take the top one. <sighs> that is bright, gosh, eh? Right, right. Nice and bright. Let's check it up here. Uh, so they're good. They're good at the moment. So anyway, that's a, just a quick check on the positive and negative. Cheers! <coughs> just when I'm waiting for Roddy to come back here, what I've done was I stripped off the outer casing of this multi plug down at the gearbox. I think you can see it down there. I'm over that, uh, let's see. Have to get I'm over the blue wire. It's a blue wire, that's the main feed going into the gearbox. So you can see there at the moment, uh, I'll put that off. Oh dear. I'm not pulling any amp, so Gus, will you turn the key on, please? So you can see there it's pulling, uh, that pulled three amps with the ignition on. So can you crank over Gus please? That's it. So we're down to two and a half, cut it Gus! So you can see there, and then that's it in kind of standby mode, and then I think Gus has turned the key and once it shuts down it goes to zero amps. There you go. That's it off and that's the light in the car on the automatic gear shift off as well. So what I think we're going to do and it'll probably be next week now is monitor the current on that circuit and uh, to see if when we're not getting the light illuminated because actually off camera I was mucking about with it and there was one occasion that the light at the gear shift did disappear. So we're going to check current first and we could actually check current and back probe the positive wire with my Veris where we drive along and see if we can get to recreate this fault. So there it's there, that's I'll take that away. So it's pulling about two or three amps in that box. I'm sure when you change gear it'll be more than that. So you can see there. There's the exposed wire in there, so everything there. So you can see the thick blue wire. The thick blue wire is a positive. So we'll monitor that. Cheers!